Hello everyone, my name is Heather Simpson and I'm an occupational therapist here at the University of Florida Fixell Institute for Neurological Diseases. I'm here to talk to you quickly today about some sensory strategies for virtual learning and how to keep yourself in tune and in line while using some sensory breaks. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about today is how to set up your study space. One of the most important things that we know with Tourette's is that it's easy to get distracted. Um, and at home, it's hard to have a set study space and workspace. But the best thing you can do is have a quiet corner, ideally away from a TV or away from um, even a busy kitchen or busy living room where um, your child can focus and be free of distractions if needed. Feel free to set up corners and maybe even a um, modified cutout to block some visual distractions because it's really important that minimizing external and background distractions is one of the best things we can do to keep focus um, when learning at home. The next thing is that we know that children with Tourette's need to move, not only because of their tics, but because of the fact that many of the conditions like ADHD or anxiety need to get up and, and move. And sitting in a chair all day and virtual learning is not conducive to that. So I have some pictures here of alternate seating. And the nice part about working from home is that alternate seating is easy to do. So you can, as this child laying on his stomach, if school is possible, reading on your belly, reading on your back is okay if that's an easy way to do it. There's alternate seating like wobble seats, sitting in a bean bag, wobble chairs, disc sits. You'll see a desk or sizer, which is just a, a band that allows you to kick and move your feet while staying in a seat. So lots of alternate seating options that allow your child to move while learning can be a really wonderful way to get some movement while participating in class. Another option, if that is not possible, is to plan movement breaks. So part of the difficulty with learning from home is sitting in front of a computer all day can be very challenging. And if possible, working in smaller doses. So after one class, if 30 minutes is up, allowed to get up and do five minutes of some heavy exercise or maybe some basketball dribbling or maybe some push-ups or yoga um, brain breaks but any activity movement in between classes or work or even tests can be very beneficial the other thing i like to talk about is exploring manipulatives or also known as fidgets we know that under stimulation can increase tick activity and it can be very easy on things such as Zoom or virtual learning to get under stimulated and kind of bored. Um, and one of the big things we like to talk about are manipulatives or fidgets that are not distracting. So things such as fidget spinners or loud clicking toys can be very distracting and not helpful. But I have listed here several fidgets that are, are quiet and some that I actually use here at work um, that I really enjoy, such as a fidget pen, which is a pen that you can bend really hard. It also writes, but it allows me to get some movement in my fingers. Um, or this fidget pod. I use Velcro on the back of my badge and it allows me to get some movement. Um, and then using these manipulatives in your hands while attending a lecture, um, depending on your child, can be very good for increasing attention because it allows them to focus a little bit better. Um, also really encourage the use of comp competing responses. So if your child has participated in CBIT, use a competing response to um, keep their attention during um, focused activities because that under stimulation can be really challenging for managing tics. Another secret is that we all tend to calm at our mouth. So um, one, one way that can be pretty tricky is by keeping a glass of water, cold water, especially with uh, kind of tart 
type flavors like lemon or lime can be a great way to keep your arousal and keep you from doing one of these falling asleep type things in class. Um, for those kids who like to chew on shirts or chew on things, there's some really nice manipulatives, um, oral fidgets, and you can see this is a, a necklace that is made out of t-shirt material that allows you to chew and keeps them from maybe chewing on their pencils or chewing on other things, um, but it can increase attention as well. And then lastly, one of my favorite things is creating a relaxation corner. One of the biggest challenges we know is difficulty with emotional regulation and arousal with our kids with Tourette's. And so it's easy for them to go from zero to 100 or have these um, difficulties with emotional regulation and these shutdowns. And the best way to do that is prevent some of these overstimulations and shutdowns. And one of at home you can create a relaxation corner. And it's great to use some of these sensory strategies that we talked about in a calm, quiet place. You can see here we've got tents, we've got bean bags with a low hanging light, um, but essentially putting all these sensory favorite items in a corner and allowing your child 15 minutes to go and recharge in a sensory friendly place that allows their body to kind of Ooh, calm down when they're feeling like they're creeping up to that place where it's just too much. Um, the best way to use these relaxation corners is not as a punishment, but used more as a prevention. Like I can tell I'm feeling a little bit anxious or feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Let's go use our relaxation corner for 10, 15 minutes. Um, and it can be really wonderful and a great way to incorporate into virtual learning if possible. And lastly, I know this was quick, but I wanted to share some resources that are found online for learning at home, some more information on how some brain gym breaks, some alternate seating methods, some sensory workbooks that you can do for learning at home that expand on things that we talked about today. So here are the resources available. Um, and as always, you can reach out to the Tread Association or any of us occupational therapists associated with the Tread Association for more resources. Thank you and have a good day.